just even taking like what's the new schedule out of it for a second it's like can we finish the game for the for you know the remaining amount of money so i think we're in a situation where we need to um, significantly increase our funding for this game or significantly reduce the scope of the game That said, really talking about the overall schedule, right now the overall schedule for Reds is posted as April. And I think there's a sense on the team that that's not actually a feasible time frame. Uh, I, think, I think it's just the larger goal, because we're like, hey, when's our alpha? What does that mean? When's our beta? When do we ship? When is that our big trailer coming? Those are sort of like, like the few high level stuff that I like to kind of get an idea of. When are the ports coming online? So I'm just, just it does work because that does make a big difference in terms of what to do now. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, for me, uh, like dates and things, I just working here this long have kind of, <laughs> kind of <laughs> I just, I don't know, I've just gotten used to things change and, and, and so I don't freak out. And, and I think, <laughs> because you know, there were times where I just, yeah, you know, we've had people freak out and like mm -hmm. leave because they freaked out, and, and 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 so I've kind of learned that you just sort of we'll, we'll figure it out. Not enough of mm -hmm. work has been done for oh, yeah. their, their, for the team to have confidence that they're really halfway through, mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of work to do still to understand really what the scope is, but it's coming into it's coming into view. Um, I think it's expanded a lot from what they originally thought. Uh, and when projects evolve like that, you need to really reevaluate the plans. So having a clear plan in place that you can iterate on is a good start. So I want to get like the tools in place and help Greg get the tools in place to have that so there's a plan that he can easily iterate on. So that's mostly what I'm helping with. It's job number one is to make this game awesome because it's just too important uh, to do anything else. First steps first is to figure out at least where we're landing. Um, and so that's not pick a date and work back from that. It is more of a bottoms up. Let's map out everything that we know about the game and then really See how long it will take. Make but can a, we do that before this milestone's over or after? Because we'll find out in this milestone if we can bring if we can bring um, cloud colony to alpha to beta. That'll mean something. Not the end of all our problems, but it'll mean something. If we can't bring it to beta, that'll be even more informative in a way. But I never believe that we're going to be late. But I've, I've been late before a couple times, three or four every time. Most of the times. So um, we really want to prove that we can get the cloud calling done this month so we can prove that we're, um, we're picking up the pace and we're, you know, we can finish stuff. Uh, it's great. I mean, this is what I've been waiting for. It's been really frustrating to be um, in the writing cave, in the designing cave for a long time because um, it's like work's being done on the game and I'm not um, participating in it and now getting much more, being much more participatory. And I feel like... I feel like I'm able to point at what needs to get done and push for on it to get it done more. I know. I know. There's two things, like for me, um, now the first one is pretty much the same as this, is, but it's just like um, a harder to list out things that I'm looking to find answers for. Because I want to find answers to almost everything. Like, is the game working? Is the game right? Is it, like, you have this feeling after the sprint of like, that's exactly what the game's going to look like as far as, as close as we can, except for the things that are obviously we can't. That's the first one. The second one, it sounds like, I don't, I'm not, it sounds like a disagreement, but it's not a disagreement. It's really just working at it from the other end, is that I really want the cloud colony to be done. I want to be like done with the cloud colony because we've been working on it for a long time and we have a lot of other areas to get to. And so I want to have it be, as much as possible, have the approach of like we're not coming back to the cloud colony. I want to be approaching it like we're finishing it off in terms of beta. You know? So we're going to go actually go through the gameplay and make sure we itemize all the uh, things that need to be done? That's the idea. 
All right, so and you were, Greg is the official note taker? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to solve a puzzle. I'm trying to make Jesse like me. Jesse doesn't like me. So when you go over here and you interact with Jesse, where the hell did I go? There, what's that? What was that? Yeah. That's if you click off the nav mesh or something like that, like that, that happens. Her turning animation is a little much. It's a little much, do you want it to be shorter? Well, it makes it really unresponsive that she has to do that turn. Yeah, that's what I was... You kind of want her to just move right away. The playthroughs are awesome, yeah, because it gets everybody in the same room together looking at it at the same time. It, like, nails Tim down to where, like, he has to, like, sit there and play it with everybody in a room and, and can directly, like, point out the things that he's not happy with. Because, I mean, he plays it a lot, and he'll send email feedback, and he'll bring things up and... and um, in stand-ups and stuff, but it's nice to just be able to sit there and like everybody see it on the screen together and like know the things that he is uh, not happy with and, and that need work. So first I have to solve that puzzle. So I come back here and I'm like, well, oh, wow, it should be in the main list. I would, I didn't make that. So task for Oliver, make that crash optional. <laughs> all right, optional crash system. The game hasn't caught out a problem. Do you want to crash now? No, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Game is recovered. <laughs> One of the hard things about making an adventure game is that um, the team doesn't often find the game fun when they're working on it. It's not like a first person shooter where even if you're working on a first person shooter, it's fun to play it. But an adventure game, you know all the solutions, all the puzzles, and you know all the jokes. So there's no like discovery or you know, what, you know, wonder or whatever. It's fun to see it come together and it's fun to see that you're making something good. But you don't stay late. To, no one's gonna stay late to like play Reds after <laughs> after hours. Hey you wanna play Reds? Yeah, let's do it. Let's hook it up. Cause like, oh yeah I know this. This is the puzzle I wired up. <laughs> so and that's that's always been sad. Okay. I'm trying to remember how to actually make games. I'm trying to program. Um, first let me get all the latest stuff. Syncing up. Now I'm gonna run the game. Never actually done this before. This is gonna be embarrassing. We should film the second time I do this. Because the second time I'll be like, oh, this is Unix, I know this. That Jurassic Park joke. That Jurassic Park joke. Is that getting too old to make that reference? I'm hoping I can actually just enter dialogue myself into the engine. Because, you know, when you you know, for a long time, from like Second Oz and Brutal Legend and stuff, I'd write dialogue, and then someone like Anna or Key or someone would have to come and implement it. Um, but then you don't get to really, like, tweak it. Like, I like to put stuff in and then see how the timing works out and then mess with it. And also, it'd be nice while I was writing if I didn't think I was just creating a whole bunch of work for someone else to do. It'd be great if I could, if I'm going to put it into Excel or if I'm going to put it into a database, I might as well just put it into the game. And then I'm not creating work for, you know, that way Anna can work on something else and I can just do this. And also, at my age, I really would like to learn uh, something so I don't have Alzheimer's. But I think it's too late. I think I have it because I can't figure out at all what's happening. How do I open the scene? How do I open it? Open in project? That's a bunch of things. Can you believe I have a CS degree? Class 89. Voice, text, vertical, font. Where's the dialogue? Where's her dialogue? I'm gonna go ask her really quick. I'll be right back. And then I'll totally be able to program this entire game myself. Ow. <laughs> I got it. I totally had it all figured out. Wait. This looks totally different than on her computer. Why did she set me up like this? She totally lied to me. <laughs> I have to go back there and ask her again. Ah. In theory, me being able to program my own dialogue in the game would save time. It's not there quite yet. See, I'm taking up Anna's time, but it's gonna save her time later when I can program the entire game myself. Let's see if I remember anything that Anna showed me. I don't remember anything that Anna showed me. It's annoying because I did touch stuff, and now I don't know if I touched something. I pretty much reverted everything I touched. Yeah, yeah. So embarrassing. Bam, I got it. I'm in. 
I've hacked the mainframe. I'm totally, I'm seeing all the beauty of those reds simultaneously at once. <sighs> Lots of day's work done. Uh, it, but there's this pressure to, we gotta meet the milestone. I just gotta get all this writing done. I can't be messing around with like this, this stuff. So I, I, I change gears and just focus on getting all the, the dialogue done. And it means Anna has to spend a lot of time implementing it, but um, it, it, the question is, will there ever be a point where I can actually, you know, get up and running enough um, on the programming to make that efficient? I don't know. Um, there's just a lot more content, I think, in this in these in Cloud Colony than there has been in, in the other stuff that we've had, and it's a lot of work to get it all implemented. I, I, I don't know. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. <laughs> it's it's always this way. <laughs> it's I think back. The first game that I worked on was Brutal Legend, and that was that was my concept for what you know, games are like, you know, and in this one, it's like, it's not going to take four and a half years. Sounds like a good game for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of iteration in the beginning, and then you find, you get closer to the spirit of the game, and um, I feel like when the game starts gelling together, kind of like the way, um, just recently, the girl got a shadow, and I was like, happier than high hell that just the smallest little thing goes into the game, and it, it's no longer just this this animated stick figure walking around. It's gelling it together, and it gets exciting. It gets exciting because like those things are going to be there as we're carving out those little connectors to the world that you're walking in. You know, uh, they they're going to be there when we start on new areas already, and you're going to have a feel for walking through the spaces, and it's really cool. Look at that sinking. That's awesome. Uh, I can't save her, I can't save her, I can't save her. Get, get up, oh my god, I've had this dream. No, I get more excited about this game every day because as, as it starts to come together, since we started from just scratch, it was just, it's cool to actually see it become real, you know? Because of the frame rate, I can't, I can't yeah. click anywhere. Uh, uh, uh. But I think the game is looking a lot better. The characters are really pretty. The backgrounds are getting better and better looking. And, um, you know, we're starting to see the basic interface working now. And uh, the, with music in, you know, it's starting to really feel like a real adventure game. And I was just doing the flat paint over on the uh, art that we had that Lee did, uh, sent out. Yeah. All right, everybody, let us break cool. and let us do this again next week. Uh, so y yesterday I was just kind of going through and painting a bunch of the, of the scene files, and now I'm just addressing all that feedback from the walkthrough, playthrough. Yesterday I was drawing hands for the girl, and then I got sick of drawing hands for the girl, so I stopped drawing hands for the girl. So now hands are the worst. Why does anybody want to do hands? So now she has hooks? Yeah. <laughs> She's always going like this and all over. Yeah. And um, yesterday I um, did some last final changes on the forum post, which is online now. So also this is my last stand-up, uh, which is uh, super sad. And, um, yeah, um, you know, like, I, yeah, I, I want to say uh, a tiny bit, I'm not so good at this, but um, just a big thank you to all of you guys. It's been an uh, amazing three months. Uh, you guys are all amazing and amazing people. Uh, I'm still thankful for that uh, internship. And um, I did a um, group picture of us. <laughs> With, oh, no. That's awesome. No way. Uh, <laughs> I hope everyone on the team, <laughs> <laughs> including you guys. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's it's a lot. That mm. oh. I'll send it around. Awesome. So, yeah. Do you guys want to print it out? Yeah. Should make it post. We'll just we'll put it up here. Scan it. Okay. <laughs> it should be big enough. Thank you, Myers. Thank you for all your hard work mm -hmm. here. It's been yeah, awesome having you. Yeah, so, awesome. Right. Myers, clap. <laughs> I thought we might be able to um, convince Mice to stay because we would have had to just derail his education, as I said. But there was a, I was not expecting the real reason he was going back to Germany, which was for love. And though we are evil enough to end education, we could not fight the force that is love. We were trying to set up a contract where he could keep doing what he's doing from Germany, making animatics for us. It's kind of like when Scott Campbell and, and 
Nathan moved to New York. I always just try and keep those guys working for us because I, um, you don't, you know, people, people, talented people don't come around every day and you gotta like uh, hang on to them when you can. That's awesome. <laughs> I'll try coming back next year. We're not totally planned. I feel like now we're actually moving at the speed that uh, we're moving at. You know? um, as soon as they get all locked down with their process between Bagel and Levi and Lee, I think it'll be feel like we're moving at a good, at a good clip. So, uh, <clears throat> you're back. I'm back in action. <laughs> Reds. That way bad. Potentially wear my hat. I'd like to actually get involved more with like the concept stuff though. Yeah. I feel like I'm just kind of a painter. Well, you and I talked about that, right? And you said yeah, yeah, that you but were like, wanting to do the way it's turning with the, because all the designs are approved, so it's basically like it's approved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Individuals have changed what they've wanted to do. You know, initially Bagel did want to do a lot of painting, and I think as we started getting into that, he felt like, hey, you know, I really want to be more on the um, compositional side, um, which is fine. You know, but that means we're going to have to shift things around. So do you? How, do you think this process is going to make that better? Which process? The, the whatever your designer process? Whatever we're sort of being I think having more right? hands painting and, well, I don't know. I think I would feel, uh, well, at least if we're going to say, like, this is bagel style game, then I would, uh, yeah, at least I would have a little bit more, like, yeah, you know, that is my stuff. Like this sacrifice scene, this is, I actually did the layout in this one and the camera angles. Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel good how that went. It's more bagel. Yeah. I feel, yeah, like this is maybe more bagel. A little bit. Click down, like just double click towards the bottom so she walks down there. Yeah. There it goes. Whoa. What the? Whoa, Bobby da. Boom. Yeah, I like the, um, the first test of that was the sacrifice area, the new uh, method, and I really like that. It's pretty, and uh, I like that whole setup. I like the crazy big um, bird cages that are being ripped open, and I think it looks cool. So it's promising. Yeah, so now it's just, I guess it's just a question of like talking to Levi and Lee this week and, and uh, figuring out the paint, the how to make it look consistent. You know, that's I think the big major thing right now. Or, you know, that's the thing, the wor a, a worrisome thing that uh, we should work on. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the very old one, right, yeah. based on that. The color key. So I, I painted this one entirely with the charcoal brush because when we started, I thought that's what we were doing on that one. So it, it's uh, I think it's it's a little too linear. It's too charcoaly, and the colors are all wrong. It's been difficult. Um, it's weird. It's it's weird finding out which area why it's been difficult. Part of it has been he's evolving his own approach um, to like the clouds specifically is very different than sort of uh, what we painted for the lumberjack. So as his approach has been evolving, I've been trying to like paint this way and we've been changing it back and forth. I kind of feel like maybe the way we should try handling this one is um, if you say take the scene and do like a line drawing composition link and then do like a little small color key and then we give it to Levi and have him try and paint it. I feel like we wouldn't need that much of a color key considering no. we're coming from an establishing that, shot I think so. already. Yeah, I think so. yeah. We've been doing uh, things as well as like, you know, I have brush sets that I've made based on the ones he likes to use in Photoshop and we're kind of updating those. So those can be given to all the artists that are painting digitally. Um, it's difficult. I mean, I think, I think one of the reasons why, um, why it made sense to have him paint stuff on the back end is it, was, it would have been, he would be the last person touching each asset. So it's necessarily just gonna be more unified stylistically. Um, but by moving him to the front, it creates more, it probably gives the overall sense of things a little more quirkiness that he would have, but it means we have more potential like consistency drifting going on in the backside. Um, but yeah, I think it's been, um, everything's been moving pretty well actually. I'd say we've made lots of really good, good progress this sprint. Like I'm actually really happy with the progress that we made this milestone in terms yes. of stuff. Like, 
we get a bunch of big features in, and the this tool's a lot better just and just kind of stuff, so. Definitely. Um, this is little things, too, just like cameras feel so much better, and yeah. just navigating around feels yes. way better now. It's, it's just like, one of those things where it's like, you know, getting a basic system in there is easy, and giving it enough love so that it actually feels good is hard, right? Mm -hmm. Like, having milestones like this where we're really focused on polishing up an area, like, is a forcing function for, like, okay, we have a camera system, but what we actually need is a good camera system, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I think uh, I think we've made a, gotten a lot of traction in a lot of different areas on that stuff this time around. Yep. Cool. Thanks, bro. Uh, what? How successful is yeah. Cloud Colony stuff going to be? Yeah, how close are we going to be to it actually being finished? Or like, what's going to be left over? Uh, well, I think we'll have a better idea of that after I go around and talk to everybody, which I'm going to do right now. But it's nice. This is working, which cool. is really great to have. So, yeah, you know, this, three weeks ago we didn't have any cutscenes. Mm -hmm. so. It's been sort of stuttering and going, you know, but it, it's smoothing yeah. out. So, we're making progress. It's just not as fast as we would like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, he's cleaned up and she, she, she <laughs> she's cleaned up and um, I'm going to be done in like five minutes. Sweet. Jesse. Awesome. Cool. So, that's where I'm in. That's where I'm at. Perfect. Why is it raining on your screen? Oh, it's rainy modes. It has a, a soundtrack. It's nice. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to listen to ambient now. Awesome. Noise. Cool. So why not? All right. <laughs> this isn't going as fast as I was hoping it would. <laughs> Miss Kipness, I'm coming to you. So I mean, I don't, there's no way I'm going to get through my entire list, but mm -hmm. I'll get you know I'll. Get as much as I can. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah, there's not a ton left. I mean, I'm pretty much on schedule. I think I'm a little behind, but it's only theoretically behind. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Well, we'll see how the playthrough goes tomorrow. Before we start, I'm going to guess that, like, our goal is to finish Cloud Colony, the sprint. I have a feeling it's not finished. You might be right. Oh, man. I mean, we have, like, another two week sprint that it'd be great if we could finish Cloud Colony and that. I don't want to just keep setting up the team to fail, though. Like, like hey, you guys, we're going to finish Cloud Colony this sprint. And, okay, we didn't do it. Okay, this sprint, we're definitely going to finish. Okay, no, that didn't work either. But okay, this sprint is the one. So I don't want to say that, but there still is a lot to do. I mean, you can't right now play the three puzzle branches, any of them, to the end. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out now what we'll be looking at. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we don't know what's going to happen because even if the sprint had finished, if we'd finished Cloud Colony, we'd be looking at like looking at the design of the game and how much time we have that we would not probably be finishing the game in April as we had previously thought. Mm -hmm. Unless you're still thinking we're going to finish in April, but no. we've done some math that means... I did some equations. And if we go past April, that would mean going past our money that we got from Kickstarter, which would be not great um, to do. Um, we're having discussions with Issa and Justin about what, how we want to deal with that. So I don't think we're going to conclude all, any of that in this meeting, but um, that's the problem that we're working on outside of this, too. Um, so let's see how much we did get done. You mean the button that says on-off? Yeah. Oh. I'll do this much. Um, yeah, so there's t I have two files on Google Drive. One is the budget, one is schedule. Um, the original schedule that we made was like an attempt to get as many people on the team as we can and, and try to include like all of the things outside of headcount that we need to pay for uh, and then like fit a game into that time essentially, right? Um, and like as we were progressing, like it was obvious that we weren't tracking to anything that was going to fit in that time. So now the hope is to try to start from scratch on a new schedule, taking into account like what we've seen with Cloud Colony and how long it's taking us to do that, how many other additional screens and areas are left in the game uh, as it's currently spec'd, and try to take a new stab based on what we know now at how long we think it'll actually take to make the game that you are designing. So the new budget, or this, this scenario, includes going all the way to September and the increased team size, which the increased team size is you know like four or five people. And has like one point one million dollars more cost. Yes, but the, but the thing about this schedule is that 
it assumes at a certain point that systems work gets done mm -hmm. and that the team gains efficiency and the number of scenes almost doubles at a certain point in the project in order to get it done. So it's actually pretty aggressive. Then I have to go find, I need to find money. Yeah, that is the concern. Okay, like, because right now, you know, it looks like you know, the plane's kind of diving down a little bit and we just need to, we have time to pull up. And mm -hmm. What does the plane diving down stand for? Uh, that's just crashing. The, yeah, the whole company <laughs> crashing into the ground. And it, 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 no. Is that what you're saying? Or are you so, being... I mean, the nice. So the thing is, is that Reds, it, this project is is going to determine the studio's success going forward. Um, it's a major portion of my forecast of the health of the studio. Um, it hitting next year is is absolutely necessary, um, and how successful it is once it once it um, you know is 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 out there and is live. You know, determines our ability to be independent and kind of have our own creative control, like that we're enjoying now. So, it just, it just seems wrong to make it cost more than we got because we were so lucky to get the money that we got. Just like I feel like this moral thing to finish it for that amount of money or less. And uh, I'm sure our business guy would love for us to finish for less. Um, but the game also has to be really good, and it is an important game for the studio. And strategically, it's an important game for us because we own it. We will. Um, we don't have to share the money with any sort of other party, investor or publisher. You know, it's all ours. So it makes sense for us to make a really good game. We have to, we we have to deliver on the vision, and I don't think it's going to be done in the budget. So we have to find more money. <laughs> uh, and I, I feel like not only does it need to deliver on what the community is hoping it is, and the people that actually backed it. Um, but you know the whole community in general and the crowdfunding that that's actually occurred since then, mm. we're the poster child, and we're the poster child, you know, succeed or fail. And so, you know, we'd like to see more games funded this way. Well, I think that it's also just important to keep in mind that there's like other impacts besides just funding the game. And that like, if we now go get a publisher for this game, then it suddenly like voids everything we've said about the project and everything we're trying to do. It's hard and I know like we're looking at a number that's large that we're saying we need, um, but like as much as possible just trying to make sure that it's as good of money as this money was. I think you know, there are, obviously there are um, financial realities that we have to be conscious of, but I mean the reality is is that you know it needs to be a double fine game and the quality and it has to deliver on Tim's vision and so it comes back to, you know, can we, what would be like the minimum scope of the game that you would feel it still you know, delivers on how you envisioned it? I mean, every time we've been up against this kind of situation, which is almost every time, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's scope and then there's money and then there's um, efficiencies and I've never seen it solved any other way than all of the above. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some scope reduction, some efficiency improvements, some extra money. Yeah. Not like any one of those things being the, the answer. Okay. All the stuff. Okay. We get it done. Yep. Yeah. Good. Should we do like a all hands in and team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. All right, guys. Okay. Okay. Ultimately, the number one decider in the schedule is when do we feel like we have a game that we're proud of. Um, so it's trying to figure out the best plan of attack to get us to where we feel proud of the game and are ready to put it out. Um, but I think we're safe to assume at this point that it's definitely past April. So just got to kind of figure out when that is and how we're going to get there. We'll handle it.
what we've really done is we've really banked the entire company on this one project, and if even one thing goes wrong, it'll take down the whole games industry. Is that, <laughs> is that kind of what you're... <laughs> Or you mean like more like a Phil Fish thing? Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> now that you're gonna use that. That's what you know. Listen, that was copyright Phil Fish. I can't do that. 